Welcome to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. We coach people every day on their money and how to plan for the future. As financial advisors, we're here to have an honest conversation and educate you on how to money. Intentionally and passionately to hit your money goals. And we'll throw in some sports talk along the way. Our mission and goal of this podcast is to improve your money journey and help you create the financial life you deserve. So let's talk money. And sports. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole, Bailey Ashbrook, Investment Advisor Representative at the Fort Dodge Central Financial Group office, and the only one at this table that wants to talk about football. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> just probably true. That is true. Uh, Cole Peterson, uh, Investment Advisor Representative and Partner at Central Financial Group. And uh, yeah, I just want to talk about uh, Iowa basketball. Let's just talk about that. Cole Jasky, Financial Advisor uh, here in Fort Dodge. Yeah, I got... We got the worst teams at the table, that's for sure. Steelers are not trending in a good direction. Broncos are about to fire their coach already. I've officially given Don't up. Don't forget no. about Caleb. I've I officially given up. They actually remembered me this week. Caleb actually, Westall. your team might be the worst of the group. <laughs> actually, yeah, I, I forgot. forgot. I forgot. Ka- Caleb Westall, producer of How to Money with Cole and Cole and digital media designer at Spin Market. And yes, my football team is the worst. Yeah. I don't know, man. My my team's the lowest scoring team in the in the NFL. All that Russell Wilson hype. Yeah, yeah. my team has the yeah. third worst record in the NFL. Well, this is like we're three. Yeah, I was like, do it worse. I can do it worse. Do it worse. <laughs> loser. No, my Jeez. team sucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so how about the Hawkeye football team? Though? There you go. There they you go. They control their own destiny. They win. They go to the Big Ten championship game. Where are all the uh, Brian Ferentz? Uh, <laughs> hey, haters? I know. I tell Luke this. I go. You're so negative about the season. Like, they're going to be awful. The coaching sucks. And then they always, like, kind of generate a pretty good season. And then I'm like, you just... Culture, man. Yeah. It's culture. Be positive, people. Well, yeah. It, uh, Hawkeye fans got to get away from being 11-1 and one every year. They're not going to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't... <laughs> they're not going... No, I mean... This I, is I, Iowa. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Iowa State fans are at least realistic. Like, they know they're going to have a bad season here and there. Yeah. Like, Iowa, if they're not... 10 and 2 or 11 and 1 mm-hmm. they're they're not happy. I know. Listen, it's too cold. We thought about it's could you imagine playing the other night? Iowa State was playing night. It oh, was like brutal. record low and getting hit. I was like It was brutal. Oh my gosh. No, thank you. They, this is why I like basketball, the indoor right sports. Now. They stink right now. Too, right. So. Right. How about the uh women's basketball yeah. teams in Iowa? Caitlin Clark, That's you know. a positive note. Got to watch state. it. Iowa State Drake women, they're all good. Well, Iowa State, actually, Iowa won, the, or yeah. Iowa lost the other night. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Iowa State's undefeated. Yeah. They're, they're like, play each what other are, coming yeah, up soon. Yeah, they do. Soon. I saw they're like on a Wednesday. five ranking. Yeah. Iowa State? I, I don't have to fact check. I, I, didn't I, was, know. I didn't know. I looked it up. Right Iowa was this. in the top five. Iowa yeah. was ranked number four, but they lost this week. Yeah. Iowa State, I think, was ranked seventh or eighth, yep. and they'll, they'll bump up, obviously. So... Um, yeah, positive things yeah. for the, that. Iowa, Iowa Hawkeye basketball team's undefeated. They're, yeah. they're doing well, too. I love basketball season. March Madness, bring it. It's my favorite. Yeah, did you see the, the recruit that Iowa State has coming in next year? Omaha Baloo? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy played for Waukee yeah. and Dowling. He's huge. Oh, my gosh. He's so fun to watch, too. Yeah. They're going to be so much fun to watch. What a great name, year. too, like a sports name. Yeah. Omaha yeah. Blue. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't want to take up too much time because last time we said there was going to be a special guest, but... JK, it's a different special guest than I mentioned, but it is. So, so I screwed up. It's yeah. my fault. Yeah, it's a great one. He's been at the company a long time. He's also a partner, and he I think he played baseball at Iowa, right? Pretty stud athlete. I, I don't know if he played. I think he was on the team. They let him <laughs> carry the water jug <laughs> around a little bit. Yeah. All right, we'll give him a mic. So when we get back, Andy, the one and only Jansen. And now we are joined by Andy Jansen. Now he can defend himself on the microphone. Anything you want to say? Well, uh, thanks for (laughs) inviting me to this special day. Um, No, I don't have a lot to defend on myself. So you did play or you didn't play? I did play baseball at the University of Iowa for four years. What position? Uh, Third base and left field. Okay. Oh, nice. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Did a lot of of, of memories. Got a lot of good friends from it. Um, What was your batting average? I don't know. Career was probably 300, oh, 310, see. somewhere around there. But who, who was the coach when you were there? I had Scott Rohammer. Okay. And he was there. He came right after Banks yeah. left. So Say that last name again. Bro Hammer? Bro Hammer. Scott. That's a good, good one. Good yeah, yeah, That's yeah, a yeah. great baseball name. Destined. 
All right, Andy. Well, you are also a partner investment advisor at Central Financial Group. You've been our uh, going office, so just give everyone a little history about yourself. How'd you get to CFG? How'd you become an advisor? So to keep things short, because this could get long, <laughs> uh, grew up in Bancroft, Iowa, went to North Kasuth High School, then obviously went to University of Iowa to play baseball, uh, went to school for finance and investment banking, was going to become a banker. And the Thursday that I was going to have my interview to solidify my position at the bank, the FBI walked in and cuffed and stuffed the bank president and my career <laughs> as a banker was officially over <laughs> before it even started oh before it even started I what year was that, that? 2002 okay where, where was this at oh, down at iowa city at oh, hawkeye okay. state bank oh wow so, that had to be yeah. interrupt. that had to be crazy that was that was at nine o'clock i looked at the lady next to me and i said well i don't think i'm having my interview uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no reason for me to be here any longer oh my goodness what a story so then how'd you tangent how'd you get to cfg so doug marlow who's a partner and been around with cfg for a lot of time or a lot of years um was my financial advisor uh when i wasn't in the banking i went down and started working for a teammate of mine his dad owned a valet parking business so I took my finance and investment banking degree down to park cars in Kansas City. <laughs> Traveled yeah. all across the United States doing that. My wife and I had a kid, and life had to slow down. I was traveling a lot, so we looked for career switches, and I made one call. I talked to Doug, and that was the first and last call. I moved from Kansas City back up to Story City. So, oh, yeah, yeah you guys yeah. moved there first. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Amy wasn't, like, probably thrilled. To work in Roland. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know where Roland is. <laughs> Yeah, it's five miles east of Story City, huh? All okay. right. Yeah. Let's <laughs> do it. Enough. So I did that, and then uh, 2014 moved back to Elgona and office out of the Elgona office and been there since. Awesome, awesome. And you guys, I'm just going to tangent a little. Amy also works at the company, so you guys do a lot for us. But you use a couple tools, and I know the guys here at the table can use it too, and maybe Cole P wants to chime in, but... We have a couple tools called Money Guy Pro and Risk Ally tools. So I think they're great tools and they're advantageous to our clients. Yeah. So Money Guy Pro, I'll just explain a little bit what it is. It's it's a retirement planning software. So what we do is we we take all your information. And when I say all of it, I'm saying all of it. Now you don't have to do all of it, but we we take your social security statement, we take your investments, we take your uh property that you have that you might inherit. We take all this information, we put it into Money Guide Pro, and we actually try to rub our crystal ball and try to predict the future that, you know, the mo number one thing people that don't want that they want to retire and they don't want to run out of money. So that's what we're trying to predict. I would say that's the number one thing that we're, you know, that's most people's, you know, bugaboo. They don't want to run out of money. Um, so that's what we're trying to predict for. But uh, it's really like when to retire, when to take Social Security, when to turn on investments, when to do this and do that. And for us to just try to do it on, you know, pen and paper, that that's, uh, you know, that's long gone. So we're trying to use our, our planning software to do a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And Andy, you talk about a little. What's your goal with using it and how do you feel about it? I mean, I, I started using it in 2014 and it was more of a tool that I felt could help clients have more engaging conversations with myself. I mean, there was a lot of times I would sit there, you'd have the pen and paper out, you're trying to draw something to get them to understand what you're trying to accomplish. Or to engage. Right? To engage yeah. them, and yeah. it's going right over their head. I mean, they're just, we're speaking Finglish. They don't understand it. <laughs> right. Good word. And this Finglish. Is, say, oh, f so financial oh. English. Okay, I like that. <laughs> that's yeah, a good that's word. Good. Word of the day. So yeah. we're speaking Finglish, and it's going over their head, and it's not engaging. And in order to help your customers, they've got to be engaged, and they've got to, it's got to make common sense to them. They've got to understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. Yeah, I tell people when we comes to retirement planning, yes, we will put in a lot of the work, but the, some of the work falls on you. You know, you, I can't put in information that I don't have. I have to get that information from you. So it's got to be a commitment on both sides now, but we, we do illustrate things for you that, that we can't, like you said, you can't do on paper and pencil that we can put it up on our TV screen. We can show you your plan. We can show you your expenses. We can show your income coming in, your investments, growth, all that stuff. And it's a visual tool that you can see and not have to just rely on our knowledge over the years. When I think from, uh, from a high level, Usually a client, I mean, you lost them probably in 30 to 45 minutes. You know, they weren't engaged. They, you, you spoke so much, it was confusing. It was overwhelming to them. And I think with these tools that we're able to use, we can bring the conversation back down to their level. 
make them feel comfortable with what we're trying to accomplish. And at the end of the day, it's the information that's coming out of the software is only as good as the information going into the software. So it's important, although we may not have all of your investments, it's important to have all of your investments in there. Do you have a, do you have a, this is, you know, off script here, but do you have a, a success story? Obviously don't give names or, or something you can think of top hand where you're like, you saw the light bulb moment for a client or, or something that, you know, maybe tied to the illustration software. You know, the first one that comes to mind is, is about a year ago. And we've got, we got a call from a client, a, a now a client down in Dallas, Texas. He doesn't know us. He's never seen us. He's never met us. But one of our clients referred him to us. And we went through the process and we did everything via Zoom and we had our meetings and we went through, he'd get the information up to us. We would input it. We would have our meetings. And at the end of the day, he goes, well, I got to make my decision. It's coming down. We're working with Merrill Lynch, a group out of New York, or we're working with you guys. And at the end of the day, he decided to work with us because it he would have been a bad story if you would have picked Merrill Lynch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. No, but, but I mean... What were the key points? I'm curious. I, lo I love hearing these stories, too. He said, we're the ones that were relatable. We took the time. We set up the process. We engaged with them. We allowed them to engage and ask a lot of questions. And with this software, I mean, you can compare a lot of different scenarios just to show them, what if we do this versus doing yeah. this? The action steps, right? Yep. I think that's a, a huge thing of like they, you know, a lot of times people know what they need to do. You know, they know they yep. need to save more, but a lot of times it will straighten and, and the, the likelihoods or percentages of your, you know, you meeting those goals and objectives go up yeah. by doing A, B, or C differently. And I, I think that's a, a big piece that, in talking about engagement too. And it yeah. flips the script from us just saying, Hey, you need to save $500 more a month. Well, no, duh. Yeah. It's, you know, easier said than done, but you illustrate it and you show actually how the long-term impacts of doing that do. I think, uh, you know, that's a, yeah. Light bulb moment for well, some I, people. I feel like the tool is such a visual and it's different for everyone's plan. Like if you spend this money first or if you need this analysis of life insurance and you can get pretty nitty gritty. And the cool thing too, and you guys talk about it, it identifies and concerns things to that client. Like, are you concerned yep. about running my, are you concerned about long-term? What do you want retirement to look like? And Andy, you can speak on this, but it's a full, it's a full blown tool. Like from what's my concerns, how should I spend my money type of thing? It's very intuitive. Yeah. I think, where I, where I see clients, the most questions I get asked, when should I take Social Security? Mm -hmm. How should I draw my pension? Should I take a lump sum? Should I set up for a lifetime? Should I set up for a joint? It allows you to answer those questions after you've got all the information in. Then, I mean, a funny story, I had a client walk in probably three months ago sits down and he goes, pop that thing up on the computer screen or up on the TV. <laughs> pop that, pop pop that, that software up. Up, on the, up on the TV. Yeah, they get used to seeing it. Yeah, yep. it's fun. I want to know if I can draw Social Security right now because the plan was is he was going to wait another two years to draw it, but it was, dry, it was eating at him. Mm -hmm. So we popped it up there and it's like, okay, you, you can draw it. it. It lowers your success rate by 2%. It's not a big deal. And then he goes, well, I want to buy a car. And I'm like, okay. And he, I said, right now? He goes, yeah. And I said, well, we didn't have that built in yeah, for another three yep. years either, but let's run it and see. And I, we went through it and, and I was able to keep, compare, okay, do we pay monthly for this? What interest rate do we have? Or is it best just to take the money out of the plan, pay for the car and be done? And I said, go back up to your car dealer. And I said, they told you 24 in your car. I said, tell them you'll give them 21,000 in your car. Your financial advisor said it. And if they aren't going to do it, walk away. And he called me back like two days later and he goes, I bought the car for 21,000. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. But it, yeah. Go ahead. It's a, it's a, a di it can be a discipline tool, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, Hey, you know, this impact of this decision does, you know, especially early on, say it's early mm -hmm. retirement years. Yep. It's a way to illustrate that of like, Hey, you do understand this, especially if the money's coming from like a retirement asset, right? If it's coming from something else or their income different, but that's a, that's one thing too. It can make people think a little bit differently. Like, Hey, I don't, this, especially because longevity is a problem, right? Something you do early on and um, it, it provides that discipline. Yeah. And I, I would say that the the most fun thing to show people is, is when you can show them their plan and it's a successful plan. But we also show you if it's unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. I've had people come in and be like, hey, I want to retire now. And I've had to show them that if you do that, you are probably going to run out of money. 
Um, mm-hmm. And that's a you know it's or uncomfortable. Have to spend a lot less. Yeah, you or or yeah. you're gonna have to cut your expenses, or or you're gonna have to do something different in retirement that you probably don't want to do. So it 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 works both ways. Yep. Um, you know the most the, the best story that I have is as I've actually had a you know clients, you know that were you know wanted to know when they could retire, and I was able to tell them that day they could retire that day, mm-hmm. and there was tears and they were excited and and things like that. So so it's something. It's something that that we use for uh, success rates, but we also use it for learning steps too. Yep. Yeah. And I want to talk about this real quick. Not everyone has these tools. Obviously, we find them very beneficial. We invest in them for our clients. And Andy, you use another tool that we don't use as much in our office, but you're way more familiar with it, Riskalyze. How do you input that with the Money Guide Pro and your clients and what does that do for them? So for me, I mean, to keep it simple for clients and to keep them engaged, um, I felt these two tools complement each other very well. And the risk allies is more just what's going to keep you up at night. I mean, what you're doing is you're putting in all their investment accounts. It's giving them a risk score. It, the tool allows you to go in and say, okay, if the interest rates go up by a percent, which the government's telling us they're going to do, what effect is that going to have on your investments as you have right now? And you can show them that. But then what you're also going to do with them is get their risk score. And more importantly, when you're going through it, it's like, what do we need to do to make sure that you can sleep at night and that when we have times like we're going through right now or times when, when coronavirus happened, that people can come in and you can reassure them, this is what we went through. This was your risk you were willing to take. Here's where your portfolio is at. It's right in line with what we talked about. You know, in a lot of those situations, I'll go back to the COVID days. I mean, I had a lot of clients come in and it's like, well, we said we would, we were willing to accept 10% risk. The market's down 30 we're down 10. We're right in, we're right in line with what we right. said we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a good, um, great, great tool that, and, and I don't use that probably quite as much, but is, is one of those things that talk about the risk tolerance of a client, not a great time to be doing it when the market's down, right. And we're in the middle of volatility. So that's something, if you're not having that discussion or haven't had that discussion as a, you know, think of it as an action step, as a, you know, talking with your advisor, financial professional, Make sure you're having that, that person's having that conversation with you because, you know, there are going to be many, many more rocky times and, you know, there'll be another headline, whether it's coronavirus or something where there's volatile times. And that's why the importance and why we're stressing the tools, you know, the tools that we do use. We, and we see this, uh, we use Riskalyze for, for a couple of different reasons. One, one that Andy, you know, uh, of current clients and analyzing their portfolios, but we also use that for people that are like, you know, new clients that are uh, not sure what they're invested in. I've had people come in with their statement from whatever company, I'm not going to name one, but from whatever company that they're working with, and I'll put them in the, uh, to Riskalyze and show them that they're 88% stocks. And if the market goes down, they're going to lose, you know, if the market goes down uh, 30%, they're going to lose 28. And they're like, what? You know, I, I didn't know that. Um, okay, well, we need to do something different. Yep. So, or to make sure you're comfortable with that, yeah. right? Yeah, right, right. Like, that, that's what it is. Is like, hey, do you realize if we, this happens, this is the impact, the direct impact could happen on your dollars? And some people are uh, talk about a light bulb moment, like, no, I don't really want that. Or, hey, you know, they're not in a position to do that. So we need, you know, need, yeah. again, need to have the conversation. Yep. Well, just like Money Guide Pro, like Andy was saying, it's a visual and it explains it to them in a way they can relate mm-hmm. and see it and say, do we need to make adjustments? And again, it's just another great tool that I know Andy utilizes a lot, but we're going to take a quick break and come back with some dollars and cents. This podcast is produced by Spin Market and Digital. Located in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Spin Market's highly skilled team can help you increase your market, by updating your website, improving SEO, designing advertisements, and producing podcasts that will grab the attention of your market. Contact Spin Market today for all your digital marketing needs at digitalagent at spinmarketwith2ks.com or call us at 515-302-8026. And to learn more, visit our website at www.spinmarketwith2ks.com. That's digitalagent at spinmarket.com or 515-302-8026 or visit our website www.spinmarketwith2ks.com. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole. Ready for a little dollar and cents? Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. 
All right, Cole J, what do you got for me today? All right, so a little, little fun fact. Um, within the past week, I believe uh, we set the all-time record again for farmland value per acre up up in uh, near Sheldon, I believe, a little closer to your neck of the woods. I don't even know how far Sheldon is, but it's it's up there. But thirty thousand dollars an acre. I think the previous record was twenty six thousand. So, and uh, Andy, you know that story a little bit. It was two brothers or something that kind of got got after it. Yeah, the the story out there is two brothers that had farmed together, eliminated farming together, or separated their ways, and this piece of ground came up in close proximity to a place where each one of them had it, and I guess they went into a bidding war and. Got her up to 30,000, which is tough business. To Brotherly there. love. Yeah, Brotherly and, love. And financially, I mean, you just look at the, I mean, that's a, boy, those numbers don't yeah. add up. I, I I, mean, I was, you know, a decent amount. I'm born and raised farm on both sides. And I'm like, that doesn't pencil out to me, but Little maybe they drama. have more money than I have or more cash than I have, I guess. So family drama. I don't think they're trying to make money no, off the 30,000 yeah, an acre. I, <laughs> I think agree. they just wanted to get away from the brother. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Cole, you got a little something too. Yeah, so last time we talked about how the House and the Senate um, races, obviously, with the election, were uh, were predicted to go one way, and they did not. Uh, the Surprise, House, shocker. Yeah, dun, yeah. Dun, the, dun. Uh, the Senate did not switch from Democrat to Republican. Um, that stayed Democrat. The House did change to uh, Republican. Uh, how that how that's going to affect them are, it's still a split government, uh, so it's still something that it, there it is a change with government so that you know it's going to be hard, harder for them to get bills through um, because the house and the senate are split but it is not uh, it is not something that we think that it will positively or negatively affect the market as much as them both being switched yep yep you know um, what what's interesting to that and history will tell but going back to 1962 from November 1st of the year of a midterm election through October 31st the following year the S and P five hundred has been up every year, running that that time frame since nineteen sixty two. So I guess we'll see if history repeats itself and we're able to have a run from this November to next October. But I, I hope we'll it does. Yeah, I was months. gonna say I hope so. Yeah, yeah. And and I looked at the S and P five hundred just this morning just to see where we were at from a year ago. And right now, from a year ago, November twenty first, the market closed till this morning, um, it was down fifteen point six percent. So not, not year to date, cause it's down more than that. Cause we went, um, you know, we started, started higher in January, but from November to November, um, it's down 15.6. So people that are like, Oh, the market's come back. Yeah. It's come back a little bit, but it's still down, um, yeah. you know, 15% from where we were at a year ago. So still a good time to invest. We shall see. All right. Enough about that. We got double dollar and cents. What a special day, special guest, Annie J. Let's talk about you, your business, your practice. So I know succession planning is a lot of your business. I know you help farmers, speaking of the dollars and cents. Give us a little background on why you think that's important and what you do. What is succession planning for clients? You know, f from my standpoint, when I first got into the business, I was afforded an opportunity to go to school for succession planning. And it primarily hit home for me because my family, um, not immediate family, but my grandma had some farm ground and aunts and uncles had farm ground. And arguably all my friends had farm ground, you know, so it always intrigued me is how do you get the family farm from mom and dad to the next generation and still have the next generation talk at the next Christmas? Yep. Solid. Prime we all have a story. Probably almost every, if you live in Iowa, you probably know of a family that is, does not talk to each other because of yeah. farmland or because of Definitely. transition yeah. of a business or something. Yep. Um, yep. No plan in place. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that these small business owners in our area fail to plan. They just plan to are not plan to fail. They just fail to plan. They're just not setting up and thinking about all the logistics that go into making sure that it's maybe not equal, but equitable, that yep. it's fair to the kids, that they don't feel slighted. And I mean, the stories are bad, but the old story that I, I was afforded the opportunity to work with Ed Hale and he was an old, I called him my gypsy attorney. He would come into town from Texas. I would line up appointments. We would go out and meet with farmers. And this is when I first started. So I really didn't know what I was doing. But Ed walked me through the process. And he always used the scenario. He goes, the first Thanksgiving after mom and dad are gone, they'll come. The family will have a great celebration. They'll talk about how they miss mom and dad. The next, the next Thanksgiving, they come with their guns. Because 
somebody did something that they felt like they got taken advantage of. And that's how the families, the, the family they come with their guns, like, like, the, like yeah. shoot each other up. Yeah, well, that's that's a little, I don't know. I've seen some pretty big sibling. Well, I'm not fake. I could I mean, see that. I know, I know we a few have people cl- that haven't talked to each other in 20 years. Yeah. yeah we, longer. we have yeah, clients all the time that are like, it's I don't an talk analogy, to but Yeah. Okay. So give me an example. Like, how have you put this in place? Do you have like an example? You know, so one example that I'll use that I think I'm going to use the agricultural community. Yep. Um, farmers are getting older. Um, the generation that grew up and made it through and survived the eighties are now getting to the point where transitions right down the road. So one of the clients that I had worked with uh, several years back, but had, he was transitioning from the play the December 31st, January 1st game. So buy everything by December 31st, defer all your income until after January 1st. We were playing that game. Well, now we were getting ready to go from farming to cash rent. Well, now we don't have the input output cost. So we can't play the buy everything by in, December 31st. Income taxes go, go through the roof. And yep. And now your income taxes go up. So in this particular situation, we just had a conversation. And by the time the dust settled, we set up a charitable remainder trust. We had the charitable remainder trust sell the farm equipment. The farm equipment was all depreciated. So everything that was on there was ordinary income. So we gifted the, the equipment to the trust, had the trust sell it. It's a nonprofit organization. So... You can defer the taxes there. And then we had them defer the, or put the grain into the charitable remainder trust and sell the grain from the last crop. Now, granted, there's a good and a bad to that. I mean, you give up control of that asset and you're putting it into a charitable trust, but you're deferring your taxes and you set it up on a 20-year annuity. So every December 31st, you get your account value and wherever you have your money invested and you get to take out it's roughly 11% the following year. And I'm getting ready to meet with one of the, the client that actually did this. Uh, we're taking out a payment next Wednesday, you know, and every year we do that payment. So one of the things in this particular situation that was hard for them is they gave up this asset, this big asset that they could have passed to their kids. Well, the asset was going to get cut in half because the government was going to take half of it in taxes. So what we did is we backfilled because they had this 20 year payment. We went and bought a life insurance policy to backfill the value of what they gifted. So now we're using half of the annuity payment that they're getting to pay the life insurance, which is going to kick out to the kids tax-free. All right. And now they're going to get all their money back. So so a lot of Finglish there yeah. from, from Andy Jansen. Sophisticated yeah. plan, though. Um, sophisticated <laughs> plan, but he, he just wanted to give an example of, of how these things can go. And they can be smoother than uh, when mom and dad die, we'll just figure it out. Yeah. Because that that is that is not a plan, um, and unfortunately, there's too many people that do that plan. So, yes, th- there was a lot of charitable remainder trust, and then annuities, and payments, and life insurance. There's a lot going on there, but I think what he's trying to say is we can develop a plan for you um, where you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah, right. there, it's out there, right? It, there are ways to do. You know, people kind of sometimes they get that, that going down like. I can't retire because I don't want to pay the income tax or I don't want to do this or give up control of the assets, but there's multiple ways yeah. you know, you know, to do things in transition. And that's where having the conversation, meeting with a professional like Andy and talk about, I guess, you know, talk about the involvement of, of a team. I'm sure you have, you know, you work with the CPA, just like you said, yep. you had your, you know, your gypsy attorney from yep. Texas come out, talk about how they kind of play and role. And we've talked about professionals yes. and we've had some other professionals on this podcasts that, that are part of our team. Yeah. And I think from the standpoint is you, you want to work with who the client feels comfortable with. So it's just getting introduced and engaged with their, their attorney, their accountant, because they have, they have confidence and trust in them. So you just have the conversations, you build the plan with their team of professionals. And I always say, you know, on, on the, our front, what are we, we're the quarterback. I mean, we're the one organizing the stuff. We're the one trying to get everything, all the engagements going, get everybody organized, getting everybody together. Because at the end of the day, our goal, or at least my goal, is we want to keep the money in the family. Because if we keep the money in the family, we've got a chance. If we have a relationship, if the money leaves the family, we probably don't have a chance. Or goes to the government. And, And a lot of the plans that we develop, we try to pay your taxes a little bit over time instead of having that one swoop of bunch of taxes yep. and then what we'll try to we'll try to eventually get it tax free to someone or or a part of it to go tax free to somebody but we're going to try to avoid the big big tax uh you know tax problems at, at certain times of your life what i took from that 
that whole conversation is why it's so important to work with someone like Andy. You know what I mean? Especially if you have a complex situation, which a lot of people do with farmland and stuff. So another part of your practice that I know is important and we kind of talked about is legacy planning. Andy, how do you feel about that? Or describe to the first, tell people what is legacy planning and how do you help people with it? You know, legacy planning for the most part, most people want to try and leave something, whether it's to a charity, whether it's to their kids, whether it's to the grandkids, it's important to them to leave something to somebody. And I think from a legacy standpoint, a lot of times clients can get engaged in the wrong stuff where they don't truly live retirement because they're, they're worried about making sure there's something there for somebody else. I would agree, I agree. That's, that's, all uh, the time. We, we have to tell people to spend money sometimes, yes. you know, and, and with that, I think it's whether it's any one of our advisors or your advisor who you're working with, it's just having that conversation, but you can build that into your plan that gives you the freedom to do whatever you want with the rest of your money. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I would say that's, you, you run into certain clients and say, well, I don't really care. You know what? I worked for it. I'm going to spend it. If there's nothing left, it doesn't make any difference. But deep down, I think everybody for wants sure. to leave something because they don't want to leave a burden on the next generation of having to come up with something to take care of the final expenses or medical bills or the funeral, whatever it may be. So what are some of the strategies, I guess, uh, you know, that you've used or, or gotten into or, or some of the conversations you're having now? You know, de- depending on the client, each situation is different, but... I mean, Roth money, Roth IRA money is good to pass to the next generation. Bailey loves her Roth IRA. So Bailey loves her like, Roth IRA. Right. She's yeah. smirking in the corner. We talk about Roth a lot here. Yep. You know, and that's a, a way to go with a client that has more than enough assets. You can do a Roth conversion, um, get the money into a tax favorable status. I mean, life insurance is a good legacy planning tool. Ta- tax-free assets, right? Tax-free yep. assets. I mean, I was one of the things that, that I did with my mother-in-law. I mean, it was important to her to leave money to each one of the three kids. But she was so concerned about spending her assets down because what's going to be left to leave? So we just built in a life insurance plan. She wanted to give $100,000 to each one of the kids. Yep. Buy a $300,000 life insurance policy, and you just open the floodgates to spend all the rest of your money. Yep. Yep. Yeah, when you do that, you can say, you know, you can say to a client, okay, now you're free. You know, you're free from uh, having to worry about how much you're spending. Not, I mean, you should always worry about how much you're spending, but how much, you know, every year that you're going through and how much is going to be left at the end because you know that insurance policy is going to be there to, for them to inherit. That's kind of how I'm looking. Not that I'm thinking about legacy planning <laughs> at my age, but you I, are. I, Don't I've, lie. I've kind of, I've thought that way. It's like, that's what I'm, I, yeah, do I want to have the liquid assets to give? To my kids, yeah, if I'm in that position, great. But I also want to be like, where, hey, they're going to get a tax-free life insurance death benefit at some point. If I want to spend all my cash or all my stocks and retirement funds, I want to have that ability or not have to think about that. So that's how I I generally go about, you know, mm-hmm. personally. But yeah, each person's different. And that's where kind of shifting back to our tools. You know, we talk about that. That's part of the, one of the, someone's goal can be, hey, I want to leave a, you know, I want to leave something to Iowa State University or University of Iowa. Yep. I want to give 50000 to the baseball program. Those are things that we build in the conversations that we're leading um, with people. And I think, you know, it, it's important. That's, you know, people think retirement planning or planning. It's, there's a lot of aspects to that. And it's a lot of it's having the conversation and knowing that, you know, you can do that. And, yeah. and there's a lot of strategies to, to solve that. You know, and I think just to add to the, the tools. The tools are there as a resource that we provi- we feel provides value add to our relationships with our clients. That's what we want to do. What are we doing different than the next person? But what I've seen a lot recently, and, and it's more recently, you, you run into people that one of the spouses knows where everything's at and the other spouse knows where nothing's at. Yes. Very common. <laughs> I would say that's like 90% of the yeah, time. Yeah. You yeah. know, and part of the tool is an organization thing. Yep. I mean, we just met with a client last week and I said, here's the tool. And I said, at worst case, we organize everything for your wife. Or, or husband. <clears throat> or husband. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the kids. I mean, if yep. you've got... Mom and one, dad, are all, you hear yes. that a lot of times when it's one one person's left and they're like, they got their... their uh, their little drawer with all the asset statements yep. in yep. it. Yep. And there's nothing worse when you're grieving or, you know, you've lost your mom and dad. And I had a client come in the other day, this cute little husband. He was like, I don't know what I have here. My wife handled it all. And his son was like, we're just going from place to place trying to figure out what he has. And I was like, 
oh, if you had Money Guide Pro, you could just pull that plan up and we would know exactly where everything is. So it is super advantageous to, to us to provide great service and to their plan. But Andy, you've been great. We talked about some great tools, how you do your practice, but I'm going to win this. What's your, this is a very relationship driven business, right? What's your favorite thing about working with clients? What's your favorite thing about your job? I mean, I think at the end of the day is seeing their successes, seeing the smile on their face, um, seeing the relief you can provide them when we've got times like are going on right now and they come in and we can do a full portfolio analysis and say, you're only down 8%. The market's down 30, the market's down 20, you're down eight. I mean, and that just gives them relief. And I think it builds value conf- or value add and confidence in that relationship where they're going to trust what you say. But as long as you look out for their best interest all the time, good things are going to happen for everybody. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to put it. Agreed. And I'm not going to lie, you might be my favorite guest so far. Brought the energy. Uh, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. Cole and Andy, man. They, they fight like <laughs> brothers. All right. Here's our sports quote because, you know, baseball player in the room. Every strike brings me closer to the next home run, Babe Ruth. Boom. All right. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Andy's actually on Facebook now, too. Andy Jansen? A. Jansen or something? Yeah, I don't know what it is. You, Andy I think J. you set it up Andy. for me, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Like it's Andy yeah. J at CFG. Yeah. That's yeah. how all of ours are. Yeah. Mine was Cole P. Facebook, yeah. website. Go like this on YouTube and share it. And uh, thanks so much, Andy. I appreciate your time. Yes, thank you, guys. Yeah. Go thank Cubs. You. You've been listening to How to Money with Cole and Cole, the podcast of Essential Financial Group, courtesy of Spin Market. Learn more about the Central Financial Group on their website, www.centralfinancialgroup.com. For now, I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. And we'll see you on the greens. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services Referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated. Material discussed is meant for general informational purposes only, and it is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Diversification does not insure against loss. Any guarantees discussed refer only to fixed insurance products and are backed by the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company.